I was having a conversation with my friend, the Sockinator, about cool things to do to sock tops that would really change the look without fundamentally changing the pattern. And as you know, sock tops are basically usually ribbed, knit stitches and purl stitches combined. So here's an idea we came up with. I think it's going to work out really well. This is the area of the repeat that we're talking about. Eight stitches. Of them, three are knit stitches and five are purl stitches. And you would do this all the way around the top of the sock. Therefore, you would need your sock to be a multiple of eight stitches. For example, it could be 40. That would be five repeats. 48, 64, but it could not be 63 stitches or a number that doesn't divide by 8 smoothly, not unless you fudged. So we're going to talk about doing it the pure way right now. Now, if this were really a sock, I'm going to swatch on this single piece because you'll be able to see better, but in fact we would have pegs all around. And we would therefore always be going the same direction, knitting like this or the other way. But you knit in the round, you never turn around and go back. But here I will reach the end of my swatch, so I'll, I will go back. I just want you to keep that in mind so you don't get confused and think that's part of the design because it is not. Now you could certainly use this technique if I did two panels like the one I'm doing, I could make a scarf, and then we would do it back and forth exactly as I'll be doing it. I started with this blue yarn, and I decided it wasn't quite thick enough for what I'm doing. These are both number four yarns, so a quick lesson in that. Number four is a range. It is not a very specific size. And I thought that to be approximating a sock top, the blue was too loose and open. So remember, these eight stitches are actually my repeat. This stitch, I will slip going this direction. Not something that would happen on a real sock, but I'm making a swatch. So I'm not going to knit it at all this time. And every other row is a plain row. We just do the knits and purls. We don't do any patterning. So that's knit three. Next we purl five. That's an ordinary purl. Now last row, I did some lace transfers. That means this peg and this one are empty. So I wrap them, but plainly I can't knit them over just yet. So I don't. I just wrap them. This peg received the transfers and therefore contains multiple stitches. So I knit them off all at once. Well, I purl them off all at once because these are purl stitches. Wrap the empty peg. That's the fifth purl. And you would do that all around your sock top. Now this is a beginning of another pattern repeat. So what I'm going to end up with is almost one and a half pattern repeats. And that's knit three. So on row one and row three of this four row pattern repeat, we just knit three, purl five, all the way around. And in this case, since I'm making a panel just to show you a swatch, I'm purling the last couple stitches simply so my cable area will show up. Cable area, you say? I have not heard you say cable area. These three knitted stitches here and down here, they are going to receive cables. If you were making a scarf like this, I would suggest you do two or three eight stitch repeats, maybe even four. Of course it's going to depend on the gauge of your yarn. And next to them, on either edge, where my fingers are, do four 
to 8 stitches of either seed stitch or garter stitch. That should keep your panel from rolling unduly and allow you to display the cables and lace pattern. But So this stitch here is not part of the pattern at all. The next three I am going to knit and if this were a real project they would be part of a pattern repeat but what's marked off in blue is the only complete pattern repeat that I will be doing in front of your eyes. It rows two and four of the pattern repeat. We knit and purl as established but we also cable. I'm looking down and I can see that the last time I crossed the cables. I crossed stitches two and three of the three knit stitches. So this time I crossed stitches one and two. And I'm going to lift the left one first and place it on the right peg and then replace the one that was formerly on the right peg on the left peg. So those three have all been knitted. Next five are purl stitches and into the purl stitches we work the lace pattern. I am using the terms that just apply to loom knitting here. There are equivalents of these techniques named for hand knitters. I don't find it especially helpful to use those terms when loom knitting because a lot of loom knitters have never hand knitted so it's not any kind of mental shortcut for them. So I'm just describing it in loom knitting terms. If you're one of those people who does both, you will recognize some of these techniques as things you've learned under another name. That's okay. So we purl these five. And you see we've already been making lace eyelets. The last time we did so, it was stitch two and four of the five stitches that stitch one, that stitch five of the purl section. They're always left alone. This time we will transfer the center, stitch three of the one, two, three, four, five, goes either left or right. If you want to get fancy, you can go right one time and left the next time, which I have been doing. It's okay to just go either way. I think it's time for a left transfer. What it will do is change the look on the front a little bit. And it will be more symmetrical if you alternate left and right transfers when making an eyelet on needle three. I don't recommend that a brand new lace knitter do that first time just because it's more to keep up with. I would say make all the transfers the same direction for your first trip. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Purl stitches are knitted. Time to knit the three knit stitches, and that will be six, seven, and eight of our eight stitch total repeat as marked by the blue. And we're going to cable just as we did here. Lift off the first two of the knitted stitches. Replace the left one first, then the right one. Then in case the cable grew a little bit, give that a tug and it'll come back to its normal size. And I'm ending with a purl stitch just to set it aside. On the trip back, or if we were knitting in the round, next circuit, it's just knit the knits and purl the purls. So these are our knits. Oops, I felt myself go between the plies of that yarn, not what I had in mind. Purl the purls. And of course, again, we are faced with an empty peg. We can't purl it. We can't 
transmit it. We can't do anything with it except wrap it. So we will. And that very simple fact is the source of the eyelets. That's how they form, from emptying a peg and then returning it to work on the subsequent rows. So there's one pattern repeat between my thumbs as marked by the blue tape and here would be the beginning of the next knit three. And I'm going to end the row with two plain purl stitches. There would be no end of the row per se. There'd be a completed circuit if you were knitting socks. And if you were knitting a scarf you would be going into a few seed stitches or garter stitches. Just to differentiate, seed stitches knit one, purl one, but the following row you knit the purls and purl the knits. Garter stitches knit one row and purl the next. Because the stitches turn opposite directions from one another, that's what keeps them from rolling. Just getting back to going the other direction. That was our plain row. Now we're coming up to row four of the pattern repeat. It's still the same knits and purls as always. And I do remember that last time I crossed these two. But if I didn't remember, I could look down and see the cross right there. Now it's time to cross of the knit stitches, which are these. One, two, three. Stitch two and three. And these are done right over left. Meaning, when they're both lifted, the one that was formerly on the right, is replaced on the left peg first. So that cable cross is done. Now we knit all of, I mean we purl the next five normally. And the transfers for the lace, whoopsie daisy. Oh fooey, I'll just start over. The transfers for the lace are done after all the normal purling. One purl. Two. Now you can see this stitch has an eyelet below it. That's because we transferred it away from its peg on the previous row. But since the very most recent row we wrapped it, I can now purl it. It just goes right back to work. And this time on the row four row of our pattern repeat, we transfer stitches number two and four. You could go either direction with your transfers, but I think it looks best to be consistent. Two and four are here. If you lost track or didn't have them numbered in some way, you can look down and you can find one, which is a continuous column of stitches, and five, which also is. So the stitches on the pegs next to those have got to be two and four marked with my thumbs. For this experiment I'm moving both of those to the center peg, number three of the five purl stitches. And that's how we ended up in the position we were the very first row I showed you. Ready to wrap these two empty pegs. So we've just about finished the pattern. Three knit stitches and we'll cable 
crossing stitches two and three of the knits. One, two, three. So we cross these two. Make sure that they didn't get sloppy. And I'm purling the end stitch. I'm going to knit back across and then I'm going to take this off of the loom so you can look at it. Here it is. Now if this were part of a continuous pattern, what I'm framing with my hands would be what was repeated all across the work or around the sock top. On this side I only had one extra stitch that I purled so it's kind of flipped around there and when you look at it from the top you're seeing the cable crosses and that looks that's one complete cable and one complete lace panel and here's the cable on the other side which had originally no more stitches but I decided to go ahead and use the last two stitches on the loom to see what that looked like and it set it off a little bit more so this is what you would get and you can see what I'm saying if you did two whole repeats with this size of yarn plus one extra cable plus a little bit of seed stitch or garter stitch you'd be at about eight inches wide and it would make a nice scarf I really would not recommend doing it in worsted weight yarn also known as number four yarn which I did here if you're making socks this would look better and it would have more elasticity as a sock top and it would fit in your shoes better with a more traditionally sized sock yarn this yarn gets about four stitches per inch sock yarn typically gets seven so it would be a much smaller scale and the lace would be more delicate the holes would be smaller the stitches would be smaller but I thought this would be good for a demo 